I, I'm especially happy to see not only the children here who are, you know, with their own ambitions to go to school, but also some parents as well, because it's never too early to begin thinking about how you're going to pursue your education. At the end of the day, I hope we all have some goal of what we want to achieve. And what I would tell you is that your education is the way you're going to get to that goal. It's a long journey sometimes, but your education will take you there. And just as with any journey, what you need to be successful on a journey is a strong vehicle. And, and in this case, let's, t let's take a car as an example. You need to have a strong car on this journey through your education to get to your destination. And your application to college is like your first car. And it's a very important car because it's going to take you where you want to go. Just like all cars, your application has four wheels, okay? And if a car is missing one wheel or has one flat tire, it can still roll a little bit. But if your application has missing two of its four, four components, it's not going to go very far. So the goal should be to have the four strongest parts of your application possible. And again, if you're, if you're weaker on one thing, that's okay. If you're weaker on two things, it might not be so good. Those four parts of your application that are going to help you get to where you want to go are first and foremost your grades, okay? Now, you've been working hard for three years or four years at that point to get the strongest possible grades, and there's not much you can do about it at, at the time of your application. So this is something you've got to pay attention to ahead of time, okay? The second part of your application, which is so critical, is test scores. Okay, so grades you spent three years working on, test scores some people don't study. Some people don't study for the SAT, they don't study for the ACT. How could that be? I'm telling you that your test scores are as important as your GPA. You spent three years getting your GPA, you should take the test as seriously as that, whether it's the SAT or ACT. And and you want to you want to really focus hard, get test prep books, possibly think about taking a test prep uh, course if that's something that'll be beneficial, and really maximize your score. That's how you're going to make sure that that second tire on your car is pumped up and it's going to take you where you want to go. But even if you have the best possible grades, the best possible test scores, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to get into any school you want. That's only two of the wheels of your car. You got to have four strong wheels. The third part of your car, the third wheel of your car, is extracurricular activities. So you have to make sure that you're participating in things outside of the classroom. And this doesn't mean that you're doing ten different things. It means that you're doing a few things that you're interested in, and you're doing them well. You take leadership positions in those activities. So try to become an officer, try to become a secretary, treasurer, vice president, president. If a, if a, a certain activity doesn't exist at your school, create a club and get people to join in to do that. When I was in high school, I was interested in business. There was no investment club, so I created an investment club. It was a great way to do what I wanted to do and also to show leadership and show initiative in the process. And then finally, the fourth part of your application is something that happens at the very, very end. And that's putting your application together with strong essays and strong letters of recommendation. So, you spend so much time on your grades, your test scores, your activities, why wouldn't you spend a lot of time on your application? It's one of the wheels of your car. If that's a flat wheel, you're not going to be able to go very far. Spend time on your essays, get input from your counselors, get input from your teachers, get input from anyone you can, your family, members of the Jamaat, to have the most creative essay that will put your application into a, into a unique light. Don't just rehash the activities that you've done. The college is going to see the activities, so you don't need to list them off in your essay. Try to bring about some unique angle about yourself in the essay. And finally, letters of recommendation, the same idea. You've worked hard for so long, now's the time to put together that application. Make sure you get the strongest letters that you can. Talk to teachers or club advisors or your guide, someone who knows you well, and ask them, can you write me a strong letter of recommendation? If they can't write you a strong letter of recommendation, you're better to go somewhere else. Having a weak letter of recommendation from someone who doesn't know you or doesn't like you is not going to help your application. You want the strongest possible letters to put together the strongest possible application. So these are the four wheels of your car that are going to take you to the best car you can go to. Grades, G uh, grades test scores, um, activities, and then letters of recommendation and essays. I just would like to share with you a few do's and don'ts now related to this, and then we'll open it up into, to questions and shut up. So do remember to seek the input of your guidance counselors and your teachers at school. Those are resources for you to use, and if you don't use them, you're not going to be as successful as you could be. Do apply to a broad range of schools. Okay, this is very, very important. 
don't think that, oh, I'm, I don't have good enough scores to go to this school or that school, or my parents don't want me to go out of state, or my parents think it's too expensive to apply to these schools. Those concerns are valid, but explain to your parents that we're not making any decisions right now. I'm just trying to apply so I can get into the schools I'm going to get into, and we can discuss where we, what we want to do once we get those admissions. Apply to the schools up front to give yourself a chance. Each school has, there's some chance you're going to get into the school, whether it's 10% or 50%. If you apply to 10 schools, you have a higher chance of getting into at least one of them. If you only apply to one school, you have a very little low chance of getting into that one school. So apply to a broad range of schools. If there's a school you're interested in, apply early action or early decision because it can help your chances. Again, do be a leader in one activity instead of being just a participant in five activities. Do spend time on your essay and make it creative and compelling. Do ask teachers who like you for strong recommendations and give them at least one month to prepare that letter of recommendation for you. Do not do the following. Do not procrastinate. A lot of schools out there have rolling admissions. What that means is they make decisions about who they're going to admit as the application process is going on. So let's say a school has 100 spots. At the beginning, they have 100 spots. So they're going to consider all the students for those 100 spots. If you're being considered early on, you have a better chance of getting one of those spots. If you wait till the end and there are 10 spots left, and the school still has 1,000 applications to look at, you have less of a chance of getting in. So apply early. Do not procrastinate. Don't just throw your application together carelessly. A typo can do a lot of harm. If you have a typo in your essay or in your activities, it just shows you're not taking this process seriously. And that can really hurt your chances. Do not be too humble to, uh, to highlight your achievements. If you've done something really great in, in Kodamala and Madhya, if you've done something really great in your activities, be sure to highlight that. Okay, don't say, oh, I need to be humble. This is not the time to be humble. There are times to be humble. This is the time to highlight what you've done well and show the college that you're bringing a lot to the table. Don't underestimate the value of sports, music, the arts, uh, Jamaat work, or any of the other activities you've done. Include those in your application. And then finally, this is so important, don't waste your summers, okay? All the students in the world can have similar grades, similar test scores, similar activities. Everyone's in student council and honor society. What distinguishes people sometimes is what they do in their summer. I'm telling you that at Harvard Medical School, where I work right now, there are high schoolers who have paid internships to come there, do research, learn learn about research, they get paid, and they're going to get a letter of recommendation at the end of the day. So they're basically pumping up several of their tires on their car in one summer just by doing that. So take advantage of those summers. Find volunteering opportunities, find internships, do things that are going to make you a stronger applicant when you apply. Don't just, you know, work in a supermarket. Don't just, you know, mow lawns, you know? I mean, I did those things too, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is you want to do something that's going to strengthen your application. That's more important. Don't think I just want to make a few dollars now. Invest in yourself, self, invest in your future, even if it means doing volunteering now instead of making money. So those are the points that I have. We have some books here called How They Got Into Harvard. They're available for $10 each. We have a limited supply. You can purchase them <coughs> online if you like also. But it's basically 50 short stories about uh, uh, students and how they put together their application to get into, uh, to get into Harvard. So I'll take any questions you guys have. Uh, but you know when you talked about internship and how they got paid? Yeah. Isn't an intern somebody who doesn't get paid? They're paid and unpaid internships. So sometimes you can do volunteering positions. Sometimes you can do paid or unpaid internships. You just have to explore the opportunities that are out there. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. The first thing that you want to do is talk to your guidance counselor because they might have a list of opportunities. Internships, paid internships, unpaid internships, volunteering opportunities. And you might say, you know, why am I going to go volunteer when I can go make some money? Again, volunteering can look a lot better and can get you in a better school than just working in a supermarket. Like if you go volunteer in a research lab, if you go volunteer at a university, law office, engineering, firm, that's a great way to strengthen your application. Thank it's going to do a lot much. more than just uh, just making some money. Thank you very much. No problem, no problem. Any other questions? How does applying for financial assistance impact the uh, viability of the application? Is so that going to... That, that's a great question. So the next table is going to tell you a lot more about financial aid. 
Well, what I'll tell you about that is most universities are need blind. So that means that when they are making the decision of who they're going to admit and who they're not going to admit, they have no information about your finances. So whether you're a millionaire or you're on welfare, you have the same chances to get into a school because they don't know that information. They don't ask you. They don't ask you. They don't ask you. They ask you. They ask you. They ask you. They ask you.